Um, okay, our talk is about uh, Wikibase for research. So I'm Kolja Bayi. I'm uh, with my colleague Lukas Günther. We are from the Open Science Lab at the TIP Hannover. And um, yeah, we um, do a lot of research projects uh, and we support <coughs> research projects as part of uh, NFDI for Culture um, using Wikibase and uh, MediaWiki software. And um, yeah, so we did some development to make this process more easy. And um, so first of all, I, I will give a short um, explanation and a short talk what uh, semantic, uh, uh, what Wikibase for Research is about. Um, uh, then we will have a small uh, tutorial where uh, Lucas is showing um, how this code is uh, organized and how to use it. And then we have also time for a, a small hackathon. So if you are here and want to go home with your own uh, yeah, Wikibase for Research, um, you can we can have an installation process here where we give you instant uh, feedback how you get your data in um, yeah how to make the first steps. Um, so maybe first question: um, Who of you already installed or maybe even maintained the media wiki, wiki base, or semantic media wiki? Okay, some of you. Okay. Um, so I searched for a picture. So I'm. I'm a keen user and developer in the semantic media wiki world and I searched for a picture that how I imagine the whole media wiki ecosystem to be and I hope nobody gets mad at me but um, this is how what I came up with. Um, I think that's a great machine. Um, obviously it solves a very practical task. Maybe I, I think you might you might configure this machine to handle different shapes of bottles and glasses and maybe you can set parameters how much you want to fill up so it is a great machine it is a kind of art it's a very specialized tool like the whole media wiki framework but obviously you wouldn't use it in your kitchen at home so you need a specialist to operate it and um, in the ideal world um, I mean it, it solves complex tasks so we could say okay it solves complex tasks so it needs to be complex somehow but there are um, examples of technology that is complex that can be used very easy so for example smartphones um, peak technology of our time but you can give it to, to people who never saw a smartphone and they can figure out the, the basic functions so um, that means that um, if we want to make this technology of MediaWiki easier, we need to hide complexity. Um, a complexity. So um, maybe we need to hide functions, um, but then we get more users to use the software and makes the, yeah, the whole process more easy. Um, so first of all, our, our base start was that in, in a meeting someone said, okay, we have this new project and it's not very complicated. We just need a database and a small front end. And that's what every developer knows, okay, this project is going to be huge because when you have a front end, then someone says, okay, we have a front end, but now it needs to be working on uh, uh, on smartphone. And also we need maps and we need tables and timetables and whatever. Um, and so we, just, we decided when we have um, a few research projects every year we have where we need a database and a front end. And our users are already using Wikibase. If they are researchers and they want to federate their data, we might use Semantic Media Wiki um, as, yeah, as a data, uh, yeah, as a core um, for all our projects. And this is normally the, the stack you need to install um, when you want to have uh, such a project supported with Media Wiki. So you need the environment, you need the Media Wiki framework, install all the extensions, um, and a lot of services you might need. So, for example, OpenRefined for getting your data into your wiki base, also by uh, end users, um, job runners who updating the data, wiki data query service, <coughs> federating the data, maybe you want to have yeah, more search uh, functionality. So this is going a huge IT project within your actual research project. Um, there are approaches to these, so for example there is the official um, Wikibase Docker pipeline, which is a great project, just got updated, I think, two months or three months ago. Um, so if you know that you need exactly what this uh, uh, pipeline is supporting, like I need a Wikibase with specific uh, services, like the Wikidata query service, you just can use this 
it's working, it's Docker based, it's, it's a cool project, uh, we definitely recommend it. But if you need something customized, and we do this in our projects, um, then you, it makes the process easier, but then you again have customization and then you have a full custom IT project within your research project. And um, for example, in our case, we wanted to have a semantic media wiki in combination with the wiki base. Where a prototype existed to do this, but it's a yeah, kind of a project on its own. So what we did here is that we said, okay, um, let's pack this this whole ecosystem, so all the possibilities to install it within uh, uh, the Docker Compose. So, um, but make it configurable from the other side via simple configuration files, so that you that don't have a fixed setup of components, but you can decide which components to install. So for example, it's, it's a bit like a package manager, like where you say, okay, which extension do I want to have installed? Um, do I want to have a semantic media wiki? Do I want just a plain media wiki or maybe just a wiki base or a wiki base in combination with a semantic media wiki? Um, and this is just all configurable by um, yeah, some config files. And then you have this whole Docker process and then um, in this world, you, you um, don't have an IT project, you have a tool that you just configure. And then on the left side, this is just your project where you say, okay, I have my data, I have my images, my texts, and I have some config files that just specify what Wikibase, of re Wikibase for Research um, is doing for me. Okay, um, some of the features we implemented here is, for example, automated data import. So, for example, when you set up your wiki from scratch, you want to automatically import some files, you want to set up the logo of your wiki, you want to have some pages that you already created. So you don't want to set it up and then do some manual, okay, I have to import this, and then you have this, this click story. Um, we also support um, a few ways of data dumps to transport, yeah, maybe data from your existing wiki base into your new semantic wiki base. Um, and this all helps um, supporting code reusability. So for us it means that with every project we, we use this technology, we can reuse our templates, we can reuse the code, we can reuse the widgets and extensions uh, that we developed, um, as it's just, we can, we can just copy from, from folders um, and know that this is all Compatible. Okay, and a uh, small, um, some words about semantic wikibase. Semantic wikibase is about um, that you have a wikibase to store your data in, and a semantic wikibase, uh, sorry, a semantic media wiki um, uh, as a data presentation. Um, hmm. The problem with semantic not the problem, but some users found it difficult when you use Semantic Media Wiki, but have your data and your query stored in the same document. Um, and um, also researchers are often using Wikibase to store their data, and the combination of Semantic Media Wiki and Wikibase allows to have your database separated, make it federated with Wikidata and all of what you can do with it, and, but then using the exact same data in Semantic Media Wiki, to have the nice visualizations, like I want to have it as a map, as a timeline, as a table. Um, and um, I show you one project here. Okay, this is a project that uses semantic wikibase, so it uh, has a wikibase um, for data about, uh, it's a research project about uh, manor houses in the uh, Baltic Sea region, um, but as you see, um, this doesn't look like a wiki at all, um, so by using semantic media wiki, you can um, use all of this technology, but make it look like a real web page. Um, so for customer or end customer project, this is really helpful um, if you want to have a 
good visualization, for example, for a museum or um, yeah, other institutes. Okay, last but not least, um, the easiest way to use Wikibase for research is um, to just use the presets. So we defined a few presets, configuration presets, that can be used just from scratch. So we have here the um, uh, Git repository um, where you just clone this project and then you just, there are uh, this uh, folder wiki presets where you just decide, okay, I just want to have a plain media wiki or a semantic media wiki or even a semantic wiki base. And then, then you can just start this up uh, using a, a, a helper script that we uh, uh, develop and then you're going. Um, and we can reuse this in a few minutes um, and yeah, my colleague Lukas Günther will show you how it's done exactly and how the code is organized. But I think um, at first um, here you have again the link to the GitLab, whoever wants to um, have a look at it. Um, but I think uh, we are open for questions about this before we dive deeper into how it's, how it's done and yeah, have an example about this. So, do you have any questions about that? Thank you. Really if you have any, ask at any time. So, Lukas, ich hole dich jetzt mal dazu uh, und mach mich leise, sonst haben wir hier die. Enough, yeah. or is it like too big? Because, like, for me, it's a little bit crowded now, but I can live with that, I think. Awesome. Hmm. I can't hear you again. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Okay, okay perfect. Um, so okay, did you hear all what I said before with the doc compose setup? Okay, I'll just continue and I hope you hear me <laughs> because I don't hear so much uh, of you. Um, yeah, like I said, like we have this wiki sh file, which uh, we wrote and it's basically a wrapper for all our compose um, files and um, our Docker compose processes. So um, basically you can use it to uh, not remember um, all the commands. You can have like basic basic commands which do um, some of the stuff um, you would uh, have to look up in Docker Compose. Yeah, but did you say something? Yeah. 
Hörst du uns, Lukas? Ich höre euch, ja. Okay, ja, nein, dann äh, mach bitte weiter. Alles gut. Okay, okay. Ähm, aber ihr hört mich auch, oder? Ja. Okay, perfekt. Ähm, äh, ja, genau. Ähm, so, und ähm, unser, das, was Kolja vorhin ja, uh, that, what, what Kolja said earlier, is that um, we have um, like um, the Docker Compose and everything on the one side, and the other side we have all our own data for the wiki base. So we have those, um, we call it presets, which can be used for different um, media wikis with different conf configurations and different plugins. Um, for example, there's a plain one where you just install a media wiki. Um, and then more complex ones, I can just um, show um, the wiki base plane, for example. This is a plain wiki base with um, some of the um, with some of the extensions you need for it. And we have um, thought of a concept to install um, extensions dynamically and to add them and remove them. So there's this very central extensions management.json. Each one is different for each project. So when you look, for example, in this one, you when we open it, we basically define all the extensions which are installed um, with MediaWiki and like um, also like these are not really ex um, extensions, but um, those are different um, local settings um, we want to set and I can come to that later, but first I show the extensions. Um, for example, here, the, here are all the extensions we install via Composer. Um, we don't install everything via Composer because sometimes we figured out we need to install it via um, via uh, Git and Git clone from mostly of the uh, most the Garrett um, side and sometimes also from uh, GitHub. But here we install our Composer uh, dependency, for example, Semantic Media Wiki and additional extensions for the Semantic Media Wiki. Um, yeah, and here we have the Git um, repositories. For example, um, the Wikibase extension and different semantic Wikibase, which couples uh, sem semantic media Wiki with Wikibase and other extensions. And we the have an interesting thing is, is, is uh, the interesting thing is, is that you can use this extension, <laughs> this uh, config file, for example, from a project that you already developed, where you say, okay, this worked for me, I just copy that one, and then you don't change the, the exact configuration files of MediaWiki, you just set these flags uh, for, for each um, uh, extension and said active is like false or true, so I want to have this extension installed, or I don't want to have it. And you don't have to handle this, okay, I delete the configuration code from my files, and then I don't remember how I have it written, and I need to, yeah, rebuild it. Um, so this is um, really making thing, making some things easier. Yeah, and also we can define for every um, every extension which version we want, for example. Like here we um, we pull the basic version which is defined in our environment file. Um, so it's here it's 1.39. So we every, from every Garrett repository, we, for example, pull the 1.39 um, versions of the extensions. But if you would like um, type here something custom like 1.41, we would get the custom one. But this wouldn't make too much sense right now because then it would crash because yeah, some of the uh, libraries are not there. Um, we can also install them under custom folders. This is, for example, important because when we uh, clone Wikibase, it would have like this name, but we want to just call it Wikibase. So it's uh, in sync with the extension repo name, for example. <clears throat> so, and also we can do something like um, custom um, scripts we call. So it's not obligatory, but we can, you can also add this one. So when it gets installed afterwards, there will be um, a small script running, whichever you define. 
um, to make some maintenance jobs, for example, um, or set up something. So if you have a plugin which needs some scripts to be called, you can also define it here. And yeah, also for skins, it's the same. You could also have like a composer um, part here, which would install um, skins via composer, the tweaky um, skin we installed was not able to uh, install via composer. So we installed via Git here. So, and then out of this, so, um... Uh, Lucas, mm -hmm. I, I one thing. Um, we um, are discussing if it's possible to um, have this file also displayed as a um, yeah web UI. Um, so would make sense to make it even more easy not to have it as a JSON file, but to, uh, as an HTML form. So this is definitely possible. Um, so we are discussing if, if we want to provide yeah. this uh, yeah. in the future. Yeah, this would make it easy for us to make a step-for-step -step form uh, you for installing and setting up uh, the Wikibase. Yeah. So, um, and this is the the uh, basis for our local settings file. So, because for every um, for every extension you define, you define um, a local settings PHP uh, file where you just um, define for the extension the with load extension and um, everything else you might want to um, give to the local uh, settings for each extension. We made it because like when we installed a lot, lot of extensions, the local settings file grew and grew and grew and didn't get like very um, readable. And this was our way to approach it um, to have like a little more readable uh, local settings file, which you can also um, alter and put in your own stuff. So the basic config, like in the most media wikis, but then also for semantic media wiki one or for, yeah, I don't know, like everything else you would load in via local settings. So, and those um, get then um, loaded in by, I think this local settings, oh. Um, but we have a local settings file which loads all those in, um, like in the it's current. It's dynamically generated. Ah, it's dynamically generated. Oh, so we, we dynamically generate then from all the the flex you said. I said, okay, I want this extension, uh, uh, and then dynamically, um, yeah, the tool generates the local settings file from. So the the good thing is that you don't have to delete any config that you don't need currently. You can just deactivate extensions, but have your config code there and you don't yeah. have to uncomment it yeah. or delete it. Um, it just stays there. And so you can easier copy between projects, for example. Yes, basically what's happened when you when you do active uh, faults, it will just not load in um, the extension. It will reside um, in the extensions folder of the media wiki anyways, but it will not be loaded in by um, a media wiki because this, this one here would not um, be there, so it would not load in. Um, and if you want to install services, for example, like Open Refine, it uh, works in the exact same way. So um, we have a, a another config file. It's a um, called the the environment uh, config file where you just define the name of the services you want to install. Like, okay, I want to have the Wikibase and Open Refine and the VDQS and the Job Runner and maybe even Semantic Compact. So it's just you just type the word in, hit save, and on the next setup process, when when you run the script, it gets installed. Uh, and um, also the setup script is cap capable of update your wiki. So when you already installed it and filled it with, it with data, um, and then you see, uh, oh, I, I forgot to install one extension, then you just change your config and use our update process. And then the extension gets installed without losing any data, which is important if, yeah, for example, importing uh, processes take a lot of time. Yeah. So for example, we can later, for example, include the compact um, service and it would just load in another service and it would be deployed. And right now when we started, we wouldn't have a, a compact service um, running. And this is basically also just loading in different Docker Compose files or not loading them in. So when we not right now would execute this, it would, um, Execute the control Docker Compose file, the Elasticsearch, the OpenRefine, 
the WB job runner, anyway, but just not the compact one. Um, yeah. And they are all together tied with um, traffic. So they got uh, get their uh, domains dynamically. I can just uh, maybe execute one of this. I think the wiki is right now running, but um, so I could now type um, wiki and presets. So we would go into a presets folder and um, wiki base plain, and now I would remove it to just show you now a clean installation. Um, so then it will warn me if I'm really sure to to um, remove that and lose all my data. I now will confirm that. <clears throat> and it's basically, you also see the commands you're executing. Right now it's just a down, down minus V, but sometimes we append different um, scripts to it as well to maybe save our data and uh, redeploy it later, for example. So now we'll wait for it to be stopped. And now we can call setup. You can see it's an up minus detach minus minus build. So it will build all the containers. And this is one caveat we still have. So on every build, we cannot make use of the caching of the Docker build um, because um, we, when we change some of our config files, um, they will be loaded into the Docker build and it will always, um, most of the time, if we don't change something, then not. But when we change something, it will go into install extensions and um, we can't make this afterwards and, and cache that. We have to reinstall all the modules. Um, from the beginning and on my machine it takes longer time than on the servers mostly so um, maybe you have to have a little bit while this is, here while this is installing um mm -hmm. while this is installing um one thing that you get when you use this is um that when you we have a wiki base for research in one git repository and um, you can then copy one of the presets to your own folder and initiate a, a new repository there. And so that means that you get all your projects, so, so your custom project configuration and all these things in a, in a separate folder and in a separate uh, repository handling. But you can still get updates from Wikibase for research. So in, in the old world, you would yeah, just make a copy of Wikibase or whatever and run it, and but you it's it's hard to 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 get updates there without breaking your code. And here you have um, everything separated, so you can get all the updates from Wikibase for research without breaking your code and keep all your custom configuration of the wiki. Um, yeah, and have it have it separated. Okay. Yeah, I just showed while you were explaining the. Uh... The different kits we have there, for example. And now we have to wait until everything started. So we have some health checks um, in the Docker Compose file. So it will maybe take a longer while until this is really pingable because um, uh, when we start the process, we have here um, the entry point SH, and there we will call the update, um, the, the install command if there's no local settings right now there. So if it's a new installation um, and then do the update, uh, doo -doo -doo, where is it? Here, the update PHP. So it will take a longer time until everything is pingable. We still wait. Um, so this is also a place where you could um, put in your custom um, scripts, um, but also does see where the custom uh, scripts go from the extensions, extension management JSON. So if you define any scripts, it will also be loaded after the installing of the um, extensions, for example. So. And in this installation process, it took a 
bit longer because we not only install here a wiki base, we also have the wiki data query service here, uh, back end and front end, the wiki base job runner, um, open refine is installed, and the elastic search um, component. So that's why it takes not one minute, but let's say two or three minutes. But the good thing is that you can yeah, remove and set up your project a few hundred times a day whenever you say, oh, I forgot something or I want to change something. So this is really, yeah, I, I really enjoy to doing this. You can switch between projects and say, okay, just stop the project A wiki and bring up the wiki B um, and then exchange some code between it. So um, we use this really as power users. So we are using and developing it. So you will see further developing as um, all our services at Open Science Lab are based around Wikibase. And we are using this as a centralized uh, tool to manage all our projects. Um, it will get even easier. And um, currently, I think most um, functions that you need also as a power user are supported by this tool. Yeah, um, I also think it will grow and will be even better to use. And also, if you get give us input, what we can do better. So, for example, here, when I um, uh, execute a wiki.sh bash script, we can also make use of all Docker Compose um, commands you would normally use when you use Docker Compose. So, for example, I could just list all the services, if they're running or not. Big here. Just make it smaller just for this one. So you can see all the services and see everything is healthy or up and nothing is like restarting. Or you could do this one and see, like my machine is now very slow. I don't know why, but <clears throat> uh, yeah, you can see just everything which you, when you would use uh, Docker Compose as well. You can also, instead of the setup command, use up minus D if you just change environment files or something in the uh, Compose um, and you don't need to rebuild a container. Um, yeah, so now we can check if the service is running. Yeah, so this was just open from earlier, but now I just refreshed and it will give me still the normal wiki base. Um, also with um, the query service, the WDQS query service would not now be running as well, where you could um, execute your queries if you have data in it. Right now in this one, we don't have any data, so um, there wouldn't come any data, I think, that I can show if it's running. And um, if you're, for example, interested in the specific, the combination of Wikibase oh. <laughs> and Semantic Media Wiki, we have a um, discussion talk uh, later on, I think at five o'clock, um, uh, uh, yeah, with a lot of participants. And also on Wednesday, we have a specific short lightning talk about this technology, so how to use it. And um, yeah, while Lucas is doing this, for example, um, you can use a combination of semantic media wiki visualizations and Sparky visualizations. So a lot of our projects says, okay, I already have a wiki base and I have all my Sparky visualizations. Do I need to make them all new? No, you just can integrate them into your semantic media wiki and reuse them. Um, yeah, and make the best benefit of what, what you already have. Okay, Lucas, okay, I think- Perfect um, example. For, for the, <laughs> yeah. For Sorry. the tutorial, I think it's enough. Um, do you have any further questions about that? Okay, if you have, uh, or even if you if you need support and you want to set up your, your custom project with uh, Wikibase for Research, um, at Open Science Lab, we are actively supporting this technology. So if you want help or support, just get in contact with us and uh, we try to help you with that. Is that a story locally? Um, in this specific, yes, it's a it's a local installation of Wikibase. Um, so the install uh, so it's it's stored locally. You can install it on your own computer, but for sure also on any server. But we don't support um, Wikibase Cloud here, just because um, there on Wikibase Cloud we don't 
<laughs> have the um yeah the the freedom to to do all these things like handle all these extensions bring in custom extensions so this is only possible in local installations